These are the answers to the chapter 19 practice quiz. Starting with the multiple choice questions, number one. Which of the following reactions is not thermodynamically favored at low temperatures, but becomes favored as the temperature increases? So considering the Gibbs free energy equation, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, take a look on page 809. Table 19.3 gives a summary of how the signs of delta H and delta S affect the reaction in terms of its being favored or not. So in our situation, we want a reaction that is not favored at low temperatures, but becomes favored at higher temperatures. So that situation would be a positive delta H and a positive delta S. So the correct answer to this question is B, because both delta H and delta S are positive. In number two, we have a reaction that is favored because the delta G is negative, but it does not occur. It doesn't show any evidence of conversion from diamond into graphite at 298 Kelvin and one atmosphere. So let's consider the following paragraph on page 787 that Thermodynamics tells us the direction and extent of a reaction, but nothing about the speed. And then this paragraph from the AP Chemistry course and exam description. In some cases, processes that are thermodynamically favored but are not observed to occur is because of some kinetic constraint. Quite often there is a high activation energy to overcome in order for the process to proceed. So the point here is that if a reaction is very slow, it is likely it has a high activation energy. So correct answer to number two is D. Number three, we have a reaction involving potassium and chlorine to produce potassium chloride. It is an exothermic reaction because there's a negative delta H. It is observed that the reaction goes to completion, so it is favorable but is it driven by enthalpy, entropy, or both? On page 798, in general, we expect the entropy to increase when gases are formed from liquids or solids, when liquids or solutions are formed from solids, or when the number of gas molecules increases during a chemical reaction. Here we have a decrease in entropy because we're going from two moles of solid and one mole of gas to two moles of solid. So if entropy decreases, delta S is negative. Now, the free energy equation can be driven by either enthalpy or entropy. We would like the delta G, the sign of delta G to be negative. This reaction is driven by enthalpy when the delta H is negative. It is driven by entropy when the delta S is positive. Now we don't have a positive entropy here. So if this reaction is favorable, it will be driven by enthalpy only. We can eliminate choice D because the reaction does go to completion, so it is favorable. And again, the exothermic nature of this reaction is the driving force. So correct answer to number three is A. Question four says, which of the following processes involves the greatest increase in entropy? Again, we're looking for solids to liquids, liquids to gas, solids dissolved in a solution, or possibly increasing the number of moles of gas. So choice A, same number of moles of gas on both sides, so not really a significant change in entropy there. And choice B, we're going from four moles of gas to two moles of gas, so entropy is decreasing. Choice C, we're going from three moles of gas to one mole of gas, again, entropy is decreasing. So why is the answer choice D? We're going from one mole of solid to one mole of solid and one mole of gas. So it's becoming more random, more spread out, more dispersed. So correct answer for number four is D. Number five, this reaction is thermodynamically favorable. So we know that the delta G for a favorable reaction is negative. So the correct answer is either C or D. Now, as far as the sign of delta H, if the sign of delta H, again, I'm on page 809 looking at that table. If I have a positive delta H 
and a negative delta S, which we do because we're going from three moles of gas to two moles of gas, the reaction would not be favored at any temperature if the delta H were positive with a negative delta S. So therefore, this reaction must be exothermic. And we know from experience that when you burn hydrogen gas, it releases energy. So it's an exothermic reaction with a negative delta S and it is favorable, so a negative delta G. All right, question six. We have an equilibrium constant of 1.3 at 25 degrees Celsius, and at 50 degrees Celsius, the value of the equilibrium constant actually decreases. If we go back to chapter 15, talking about Le Chatelier's principle and the effect of changing temperature on the value of K, in an exothermic reaction, heat is produced, thus increasing the temperature causes the equilibrium to shift toward the reactants and the value of K decreases. So that's what's going on here. We have an exothermic reaction. Now we can eliminate choice A because the K is larger than one. So we know we have a favorable reaction that says nothing about the rate. So delta G must be negative if K is greater than one. And the reaction probably has a negative delta S because you're going from two aqueous species to one aqueous species. So correct answer, the exothermic reaction is why the value of K decreases when the temperature increases. Number six is D. Number seven, under which of the following conditions will an exothermic reaction be thermodynamically favorable? If you'd like delta G, to be negative, and delta H is negative because it's exothermic, then delta S, if it's positive, then the reaction should be favored at all temperatures. Another condition exists where if the delta S is negative and delta H is negative, it's only going to be favored at low temperatures. So choice C is talking about if the temperature is greater than the ratio of delta H over delta S, that would make it non-spontaneous or not favored. So correct answer is if delta H is negative and delta S is positive, then that will lead to a favorable reaction. Number seven is B. Number eight, for entropy to decrease, it should be coming, becoming less random or more ordered. So in general, the system is going to become more random when you go from a liquid to a gas or a solid to a liquid or a solid to a gas or the number of gas molecules increases. Melting is solid to liquid, entropy increases. Evaporation, liquid to gas, entropy increases. Sublimation, solid to gas, entropy increases. Precipitation, you're forming a solid. So that would be the only example where entropy decreases. Number eight is C. Number nine, the reaction represented above goes essentially to completion. So we know that it is favorable. So the delta G should be negative. The delta H is positive. So we have an endothermic reaction. What can be inferred about delta S? Well, if delta S were negative, the reaction would not be favored at all. So therefore, because this reaction does go to completion, that means that the delta G is negative at 298 Kelvin, if delta H is positive, delta S must be positive because that's how we can get a negative delta G. So correct answer is C. Number 10, we know that below 400 Kelvin, the reaction is favored, but it's not favored above 400 Kelvin. So 400 Kelvin must be the point at which it switches from being a negative delta G to a positive delta G. That means that at 400 Kelvin, the delta G must equal zero. Let's plug in the values we know. Delta H equals T delta S. The delta H is negative 20 kilojoules per mole. The temperature is 400 Kelvin and the delta S we don't know. Now all four of these choices are in joules per mole Kelvin. Let's convert 20 kilojoules to joules that's negative 20,000 joules per mole. Let's divide both sides of the equation by 400. 
So we have negative 20,000 joules per mole divided by 400 Kelvin. So delta S is negative 50 joules per mole Kelvin. Correct answer is A. All right, and the last multiple choice question. If we are at equilibrium because we are at the melting point, this is on page 787, at the normal melting point, the solid and liquid phases are in equilibrium. At equilibrium, delta G is zero, and delta H equals T delta S. So number 11 is C. All right, now on to the free response questions. Number one, calcium oxide has been proposed as a substance that can be used to heat water quickly for a portable heating pack or for cooking. So we have an exothermic equation involving calcium oxide and water. A student wants to design a heating pad that could heat 150 grams of water from 25 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius how much heat is the water going to absorb? So looking at our formula sheet for the AP Chemistry exam, we see that Q heat equals MC delta T, mass times specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. That is our equation. So we have 150 grams of water, we have the specific heat capacity of water, and we have the change in temperature from 25 to 60. That's a difference of 35 degrees Celsius. Here is the unrounded answer, and we'll go with three significant figures. So we could write 21,900 joules, or in scientific notation, 2.19 times 10 to the fourth joules. Part B of this question, calculate the minimum mass of calcium oxide that the student would need to use. So we have the heat from part A, and we also have the delta H for this reaction, that's negative 63.7 kilojoules of heat released for every one mole of calcium oxide that is consumed. I just converted that to joules. Let's convert moles of calcium oxide into grams using the periodic table. And so our final answer in grams, 19.3. All right, moving on to part C. A student hypothesizes that the design of the heating pad could be changed to enable it to heat 150 grams of water from 25 degrees Celsius to 90 degrees Celsius by using a greater mass of calcium oxide. Let's first calculate the delta S using the numbers in the table. So products minus reactants, 40 minus the sum of 83 and 70. That gives us a delta S of negative 113 joules per Kelvin mole of reaction. All right, the next part of this part C, is this reaction going to be thermodynamically favorable at 90 degrees? Here's the Gibbs free energy equation. We have our negative 63.7 kilojoules for our delta H. We convert 90 degrees Celsius into Kelvin, so 363 Kelvin. Notice that we converted the entropy value, the delta S, into units of kilojoules per Kelvin mole. That way the units will match. Since our delta G is a negative value, then yes, the reaction is thermodynamically favorable because the sign of delta G is negative. All right, number two. Ethylene reacts with ammonia to produce ethylamine according to the equation above. Let's calculate the delta H for this reaction. So products minus reactants. We get negative 53.6 kilojoules per mole of reaction for the delta H. So it's an exothermic reaction. We'll calculate the delta S, products minus reactants. And our delta S is negative 128.1 joules per Kelvin mole of reaction. So we have a negative delta H and a negative delta S. The delta G at 298 Kelvin is equal to negative 15.4 kilojoules per mole. So this reaction is favored at 298 Kelvin. Well, the equilibrium constant should be more than one since we know that the reaction is favorable. We have to use the following equation. So the equilibrium constant is equal to E raised to the power negative delta G over RT 
watch out for units and watch out for sine. So we have a minus sine and we have a negative 15.4 kilojoules. We're going to have to turn the R value into kilojoules, so 0.008314 and again 298 Kelvin. The value for K, the equilibrium constant, is roughly 500, 5.0 times 10 to the second power. That's consistent with the fact that the reaction is favorable, so K is more than 1. The temperature at which delta G would be 0, we're going to go ahead and divide delta H divided by delta S, watching out for our units here. We do the math correctly and we get 418 Kelvin. Going back to Celsius, that would be 145 degrees Celsius. All right, the next part. Is this reaction with a negative delta H and a negative delta S, is it driven by enthalpy or entropy or both? It is driven by enthalpy only. So in terms of the Gibbs free energy equation, reactions are thermodynamically favorable when delta G is negative. Since the reaction is exothermic, delta H is negative. The reaction is driven by enthalpy because it helps to make the sign of delta G negative. But on the other hand, delta S, which is negative, does not help to make the sign of delta G negative. So the reaction cannot be driven by entropy. It is, however, driven by enthalpy. All right, well, that represents the end of the Chapter 19 practice quiz. I hope that those answers and explanations were helpful. Thanks for watching and good luck studying.